We're going to show you today a little bit of our SWAMP program, which is our water quality monitoring program that we conduct up and down the coast of North Carolina. And so we have with us today a uh, water quality instrument, if you can get that on the camera. Um, this is a YSI, which is a corporation that makes these for us. And essentially what this does is it'll give us the temperature, the pH, the oxygen, um, and the amount of turbidity, which is the water clarity within the water. And so what they have at the bottom of this is all these various probes tell us various uh, water quality parameters. And so we're going to show you how that works today and let you see what the actual conditions are out here right now. And Heather's going to help me deploy this. Okay, while they're getting this ready, what they're doing is they're putting a protective cage over, the, uh, over all those sensors because these are very delicate, very expensive uh, pieces of equipment. And what they're going to do, they have this hooked up to what's called a, a YSI 650. It's a handheld computer that they can use to check uh, the different conditions of the water while it's hooked up to this uh, data logger. Now the water quality that we're checking for, we're checking for very general uh, characteristics of the water. We're checking for dissolved oxygen, pH, turbidity, temperature, salinity, depth. Okay, Dr. Fear, can you tell us exactly what you're doing at the moment? So right now it's 18 degrees Celsius, so that's the temperature. Uh, let's see, we have 31 parts per thousand salinity, so that's really, really close to ocean water, which is normally 35 parts per thousand, so it's real salty right here now. And we have um, about 8 milligrams uh, dissolved oxygen, which means there's lots of oxygen in this water, which is really good because the fish and crabs and oysters and things like that have to have oxygen to breathe. And so there's plenty of that right here for them now. Now, will the... Uh, will the different characteristics of the water change the deeper you go? It can depending on the physical condition of where you are and what we'll do is we'll actually drop this down to the bottom and see how things change. So now the sonde is sitting on the bottom and the, does this thing show a depth for us? It does, it's at uh, two meters. Which, which is that. about uh, right around six feet. Six feet. And I've lifted it just a tiny bit off the bottom so that the turbidity will be accurate rather than have the whole um, sawn in the mud. What would the, uh, why is that important? Well, if this drags along the bottom, um, we could end up stirring up some of the sediment and getting a reading that's not really representative of what's in the water column. Okay, what, uh, has there been any changes in the, uh, in the different parameters of the water from the well, top to the bottom? It has, and interesting changes, the temperature is 18 degrees, so it's actually warmed up a little bit. And that makes sense because we had a really warm day yesterday, and so today is really cool. So the surface water is cooled off and the bottom water is still warm. It's pretty interesting. Now, you mentioned a little earlier about a program called SWAMP, and the acronym for that is SWMP. So now, can you, can you tell us a little bit more about what the system-wide monitoring program is and, and uh, who's doing it within the reserve system? Sure. SWAMP is a nationwide program that all the uh, NEARS reserves utilize and essentially we take these sawns that you have just seen deployed here and we place them at various locations along the coast and the other reserves do the same thing so we have a network of these water quality monitoring sites throughout the nation running from essentially Rhode Island down to Texas and there's also one in Alaska so it gives us real-time monitoring across the nation which allows us to track how the water quality is changing which is really good because you know if you try to make management decisions or or decide what's best you have to have the data to back up your decision so that's what these are being used for and uh, we've been deploying ours for almost a decade now and the other reserves have come online and we have a continuous data set now for a good seven to eight years and that's going to be really valuable in the future as we decide how we want to manage our nation's estuaries. And they're taking this thing apart now. And what we're going to do is put the protective cap back on. Let's talk about the probes. Oh, you want to talk about the probes? All right. 
Heather, you want to uh, go through the probes for us? Sure. Um, this first probe is for dissolved oxygen and it has a membrane that um, is permeable and allows the probe to measure how much oxygen is dissolved into the water. Over here, this one is for conductivity and salinity and also down here, this monitors temperature. This one is for pH, um, kind of like the acidity of the water. And this one down here is a turbidity sensor um, that measures um, the, basically the water clarity. So all of these together report back to this handheld um, display. And the other option that we use in the field is um, a long-term deployment where instead of having the cable and the display, um, we actually just disconnect this and set up this um, probe where it stores our information until we get back to the lab and download it onto the computer. And so we can look at what happens over several weeks time. And um, we've also got a cage that shows you what we use sometimes in the field. So the YSI just fits down into the cage. And if this was going to be deployed, we'd of course put the guard back on so that the sensors could collect data about the water. Um, but this cage helps to keep the sensor down on the bottom of the, um, the areas that we're monitoring. Now, I noticed that we were a little concerned about keeping these probes covered up. Why is that? Can, what happens if they stay out of water and get dry? Well, there's two issues with leaving the probes uncovered. One is they're very fragile and break easy and they're not cheap. They're usually about $1,000 to replace each of those individual probes. And the other problem is if they dry out, then the oxygen electrolyte actually gets sucked out and it dry up and you get inaccurate readings. Okay, so we, we had a question come in uh, about the data, and uh, if you think about it, if this, if this instrument's collecting data every 30 minutes, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, for, you know, the eternity that you have it in the water, that's storing an awful, awful lot of data. You know, what happens to this data? What do you do with it? Well, we use it uh, within the reserve to look at trends in North Carolina's coastal system, and we also send it to uh, NOAA, Central Data Management Office, and they store not only our data, but also data from all the other reserves. And anybody who wants to look at water quality data across the nation can get the data from that office. You just call in and tell them where you want it and what years, and they'll send it to you. And so it's being used to look at how the estuaries are responding through time.